A very good morning to you and welcome as usual to our Friday prayers here in the villages of the Cookhams in this the third week of Advent and during our preparations for celebrating the birth of Jesus, of putting the Christ into Christmas. Our Gospel reading today comes from John's fifth chapter where Jesus again refers to the importance of the ministry of John the Baptist. But, and as foretold by John, Jesus' role is very much more important. Jesus said, You sent messengers to John, and he testified to the truth. Not that I accept such human testimony, but I say these things so that you may be saved. He was a burning and shining lamp, and you were willing to rejoice for a while in his light. But I have a testimony greater than John's. The works that the Father has given me to complete, the very works that I am doing, testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And this is the word of the Lord. In this passage, Jesus almost speaks as though he were giving evidence in a court of law. He wants to convince the people that he was speaking the truth about himself. He had said that God was his father and also said that he had the power to give eternal life. And then he added earlier in the chapter that God had also given him the authority to judge all people. Clearly, Within these statements, Jesus was saying that he was at one with God. Now, in those days and in Jewish law, the evidence of just one person was not sufficient. It was not enough for Jesus to profess just these truths about himself and on his own. But, of course, Jesus had other evidence that he was telling the truth about himself. There was John the Baptist who had preached the truth. John told the people who Jesus really was. He had shown that Jesus was the way to receive God's salvation. But as always, Jesus draws us back from words to works. He tells the Jews that while he respects the testimony of John the Baptist, for, for crucial evidence, they should look at the works the ministry, the miracles, the model which Jesus set, and all in obedience to his Father. And let's remember just that. Let's reflect on that as we remember Christ's birth to a humble girl and in a stable. Amen. And as we approach the celebration of Christ's birth this year, we are experiencing, experiencing some fairly hard, dark times caused by many factors, including the war in Ukraine and the huge inflation caused by the restriction on our supplies of energy. And as always, the poor, the sick and the elder, elderly suffer the most. And it is the responsibility of everybody who can help to do so. And so let us pray for God's help and for Christ, the light of the world, to bring comfort, love and grace to our lives and to all. Transforming God, whose light always penetrates the darkness and whose love always overcomes hate, we ask that you sustain us as we struggle to make your light visible in an angry and frightened world. Nurture us daily, as we work for your justice in unjust places and your peace in places where no peace is to be found. Give us courage and strength when we are fearful and weak. Give us hope and forgiveness when we feel hopeless and angry. And guide us every step of the way as we walk towards your light. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And at this time, we pray especially, dear Lord, we pray for reconciliation between all sides in the current strike action. We pray and give thanks too for those who eventually have to make compromises 
in order to find a peaceful solution. In Jesus' name we ask this. Amen. And so, drawing together all our prayers, let us say together as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And we close as we ask for God's blessing. We pray that the Lord will bless us and keep us, that the Lord will make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us, that the Lord will turn his face toward us and give us his peace this day and always. Amen. And so, farewell for now, and I do hope that you can stay warm and safe. Farewell. <laughs>